we think we've been um, selective and successful in finding assets uh, that met that those criteria, uh, but also really were actionable and are things that we can see that we can build into a business, you know, maybe smaller initially at first, but that can grow and expand and have a long life and deliver you know, long-term positive returns to shareholders. Hello viewers and welcome to Assay TV. In this feature, we're introducing Silvercorp Metals, who are a stable and profitable silver producing company, indicating a clear strategy for growth. And I'm pleased to connect with Lon Schaefer, who's president of the company. Lon's 25 years of capital markets experience in corporate finance, analyst roles and leading mining corporates has put us in a great position to hear a lot more about this exciting project. So Lon, welcome. Thanks, Adam. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, so why don't we start by sharing an overview of Silvercorp as a company, please? Well, uh, Silvercorp has a uh, long and storied history, as uh, as you pointed out, a stable and uh, profitable silver producer. It really comes down to asset quality. Uh, the mines that we're operating are low cost, so they've been able to generate good margins and, and positive uh, free cash flow over the years. And what it's allowed to do uh, is allow the company to build up uh, an asset base of uh, cash investments, other uh, uh, other assets um, from this um, you know this organic business growth and generation, uh, not having to come to the capital markets and do financings. Also, the company has a long history of paying dividends and doing buybacks, and, and that's another feature that uh, uh, really resonates with shareholders. Yeah, that leads nicely into my next question because what I was going to say is you know, according to the core message here, why should investors consider owning Silvercorp shares? Maybe elaborate on some of those points that you've put out there. Well, it is that uh, that strong cash flow generation from those assets, a strong balance sheet. So we have two hundred million in uh, U.S. in cash uh, and no debt as of our uh, June thirtieth balance sheet. Uh, a strategy to grow, and uh, from a valuation standpoint, you know we we believe that we're uh, undervalued uh, relative to our peers and, and off, across a broad range of metrics. So mm -hmm. from an entry standpoint, you're getting exposure to that silver production uh, at a low cost, but also um, some other assets, cash, and uh, we have a significant investment in another uh, silver company, New Pacific Metals, mm -hmm. uh, which is advancing two very promising projects in uh, Bolivia at this time. Yeah. So what about the asset qualities then across, you know, you're sort of a low cost operator. Um, how are you creating these, talk about some of these financial results and cash flow that you're you're creating with the quality of the assets that you've got? Yeah, well, the the uh, key consideration is producing last year 6.6 .6 million ounces of silver, uh, this year anticipating growth to just over seven, and we can see a path onwards to 8 million ounces a year. And, you know, our all in sustaining cost to produce an ounce of uh, silver uh, net of our byproducts is you know, between sort of nine and 950, depending on the uh, time period. Uh, so at say 950 an ounce, that's what's generating a good margin at current silver prices, and mm. is what is allowing us to uh, generate that cash flow uh, to fund growth, uh, fund expansion at our assets, uh, fund investments like the ones we've been making. Yep, excellent. So you're making money at all points of the cycle, that's great. Uh, um, what about the differentiation factors? You know, there's some a range of junior mining or, or, or sort of silver producing companies out there. Um, what differentiates you from uh, the competition here? Well, well I think uh, I think the key differentiators uh, for us are the fact that um, you know we look for assets that have an asset quality from a technical standpoint, but then looking at them and saying, can this be built into a viable business? And, um, uh, you know, rather than falling in love with what's a great looking deposit, but really just for other reasons, we'll never get built into a profitable business and it's going to suck a lot of time right. and resources out of the company. Uh, you know, we think we've been um, uh, selective and successful in finding assets uh, that met that those criteria, uh, but also really were actionable and are things that we can see that we could build into a business, you know, maybe smaller initially at first, but that can grow and expand and have a long life and deliver you know, long-term positive returns to shareholders. And so that's, you know, really what the next uh, chapter of our growth is all about is finding other assets that we can do that with, with that mm -hmm. strong uh, balance sheet that we have. 
Excellent. Maybe before we talk about the growth part, can we just touch on sort of the advantages that you gleam through uh, China and the Chinese operation and, and, and the integration there with sort of that midstream, the, the, the processing piece as well? Yeah, I think the, the advantage is, is if you think of uh, the rest of the industrial world, a lot of the manufacturing capacity has been um, you know, moved uh, to China or supplies China because that's really the engine for manufacturing. Uh, you know, we think of ourselves really as just another Western manufacturing company that happens to be operating in China. Uh, the mines that we're operating are delivering important commodities into the, uh, the, the the Chinese market, you know, whether that be silver that then could go into uh, construction of uh, solar panels exported um, around the world or for domestic consumption, because uh, that's where all the solar panels are made. Obviously, the lead and zinc are industrial metals that, um, um, you know, the world is a big consumer of and uh, a lot of the products that uh, that are made are made in China. So, you know, we're right uh, near where the customers are. Those are the smelters that you know, that treat concentrates like the ones that we're producing. Uh, so we have very good relationships with the smelters, uh, very good working capital terms, uh, which is an advantage. And on the flip side, you know, dealing with uh, what uh, mining companies need in terms of inputs, you know, we're very close to the suppliers of those products and services, reagents, et cetera. Uh, capital items to build mines, to build mills. So, you know, we're right there with a very competitive marketplace to get these things uh, at a very good cost and, uh, and high quality. Henan Found Mining is a joint venture established by Silvercourt Metals and Henan Non-Ferrous Metals Group in August 2004. Its main activities are exploration, production, and the sale of silver, lead, zinc, and gold concentrates. Its goals are safe, efficient, environmentally friendly mining development. The company generates long-term value through its highly efficient management of four mines and two processing plants with a daily processing capacity of more than 1,000 tons and mining rights over an area of 68.6 .6 square kilometers. The company is a major producer of lead, zinc and silver in China. Management plays a key role in ensuring safety, environmental protection, quality, and innovative development. Excellent. Okay, let's talk about some of the cash that you mentioned before and how you're deploying that for the growth. And you did mention New Pacific already, but could you drill down into the value of that investment? Yeah, well, that uh, you know that that investment uh, is uh, you know approximately 100 million, you know, in terms of mark to market. Uh, at, mm. uh, current values, uh, which is a multiple of what we put into it, you know, between two and a half and three times our money on that. Uh, we think, well, there have been a number of good catalysts this year in, in what's been a tough mining market. Uh, we anticipate these catalysts to continue. And uh, really, this was part of uh, identifying that uh, there were some great assets available that New Pacific bought and Silver Corp uh, effectively you know, sponsored that acquisition and has been funding the uh, development of those assets. Really, two of them uh, from Discovery, uh, one of which, which has announced a PEA uh, earlier this year, that Silver Sand and is moving ahead into the permitting and PFS stage. Uh, and the uh, second, Karangas, has gone from discovery uh, to an initial resource with, that was just announced uh, earlier this week, which is uh, very exciting. These are Bolivian assets, right? Yes, these are two uh, very significant uh, silver, and in the case of uh, Karangas, silver, gold, and uh, some base metals in uh, Bolivia. Yep, very good. Okay, great. So from here, uh, this point in the market cycle and this point in the year what's civil corp strategy um going forward well the, the strategy has actually been quite consistent which has been running through a very disciplined process of asset evaluation uh, looking mm. to find assets in places where you know where we like the technical aspects and where i mentioned you know earlier where we have the visibility on moving forward and building a mine and building a business so so that really has been quite consistent you know, we've targeted and designated uh, a few key geographies, uh, Africa, uh, certain parts of Latin America and uh, Australasia as, as, you know, regions, districts that we've been uh, primarily focused on. Uh, so for us to uh, have identified in the Nyanzaga project owned by Orcorp, 
uh, in Africa is entirely consistent with our strategy, which is to find a development asset that uh, really ticks uh, all three boxes. We like the project technically. Uh, we can see a path forward, uh, both uh, from a technical standpoint, construction, but also community government at all levels. Um, the project is effectively permitted. So, so that's something that we're not needing to wait for. And then lastly, you know, finding a party that on the other side that we could negotiate uh, a deal uh, acceptable, mutually acceptable to both sides. And so with this, uh, we have our uh, next avenue for growth and uh, looking forward to uh, building a gold mine in Tanzania. Yeah, exciting stuff. So it seems like you need that. The, the vision and the, and, the, and the proof that this is an asset that's necessarily going to get built rather than just getting hung up on the sort of geology of something. It's got to be a good asset, but it needs that trajectory, right? Yeah. And I think that's a bit of a distinguishing factor. Some of these jurisdictions that you know people are designating as a safer or tier one, uh, you can pay a premium to get an asset in that jurisdiction, but then, yep. and you never lose the asset, but if you never make progress, because there's too many uh, roadblocks uh, mm. for a variety of reasons, then you sort of wonder, well, what did you end up paying for um, in effect at the end of the day? You bought something yep. that's, that looks great on a PowerPoint slide, but isn't a, a business that you can go ahead and build. Yep, that's fair. Maybe maybe we can just expand a little bit on uh, Nyanzaga in Tanzania, just, just what the uh, summary of the key headlines are from the uh, DFS and then also your, your plan from here. Yeah, well, the the uh, DFS calls for uh, both an open pit and underground operation producing approximately 2.5 million ounces of gold um, over a mine life of just under 11 years. Uh, capital costs in the DFS approximately 475 million. Uh, we've looked at the project and um, um, all the key uh, factors line up with what they've um, what they've announced. But we have a Bit of a different uh, approach. We think that we can uh, defer some of the capital and so uh, drop that initial capital cost down by a, a meaningful amount, making it uh, easier to fund and to build and staging some of that development. And over our game plan, uh, the mine life will be closer to uh, 16 years and produce mm -hmm. just under 3 million ounces and with more of it coming from the, uh, the open pit uh, portion of the, of the mine plant. So, um, you know, we're excited about getting going. Uh, we've, uh, um, you know, we've announced the deal. We're in the progress to, uh, to close that. We've made a placement into Orcorp, providing some funding to get going on some of the key gating items at the outset. Uh, so uh, excited about closing this deal here, uh, likely early December, and then uh, okay. continuing on. Yeah, I was going to ask, yeah, did you have a date? But December, that's good. Yeah, that's uh, early December is the uh, the expected uh, time frame. Mm -hmm. Very good. And just uh, just to sort of conclude for investors who are interested in the story here and sort of your strategic development, do you have a, like a threshold on a number of targets that you want to acquire or or work work with? Um, is this enough for now, or are you looking at? You mentioned Australasia and and, and looking around the rest of the world as well. Well, I, I think um, the, the key focus here is obviously closing this transaction and being able to demonstrate to the market that we are going to deliver on uh, on building this project. Um, mm. But by no means do I think we're done. I think we do have capacity uh, to look at other uh, targets. And uh, it would be, if you look at where we are right now in terms of geographies and amount of free cash flow, it would be nice to see a company in three to five years where you've got visibility on, say, uh, somewhere between three and five operations you know, delivering uh, three to five times the free cash flow that we currently are. Yeah, and I think that would put us in terms of from a company standpoint uh, in, a, in a league and attracting a broader range of investors. Um, that uh, is is clearly the, the objective here. Yeah, because you could argue that's you know value proposition here in terms of the valuation of the company at the moment. Yeah, and and I think that value proposition, as we demonstrate that we're moving towards that target, will begin to narrow, and so that's why now is a particularly good time to get exposure to this uh, growth story. Yep.
Excellent. Well, Lon, thanks very much for giving us the introduction and the overview of the strategy for silver court metals. It's been really interesting to hear about that. And thanks for speaking with us ATV. Thanks, Adam. My pleasure.